Yummy. Hey guys, hey, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Book Miss. Today's video is going to be about 25 books I want to read in the year of 2025. My goal for this year is to get at least 70% of my physical TBR done. I have 107 books on my physical TBR. That is my TBR cart. It's actually an entire bookshelf. And if you notice books are missing, that's because I picked out 25 for us to read for sure this year. It's slightly above 25 books because I included series as one book and that's just to encourage me to get more of my TBR done. Like I said, I'm at 98 books read this year and if I were to read every single book on my shelf, I could have a completely empty zero number physical TBR and that sounds perfect to me. So that's a goal. I'm also going to be on a strict no buying ban in 2025 except for series that I'm currently reading or like new releases that are really really exciting for me. But other than that I'm not gonna try I'm gonna try not to buy a book until my physical TBR is is done. I'll say there's a few exceptions to that like classics and things like that but the goal stands. Without me rambling, let's get into all our books. I am going to say I didn't pull one of the books off my bookshelf because it's holding my plant up top, but that book is Blue Sisters by Coco Miller. I already know this is probably going to be a five-star book because I loved her book, um, Cleopatra and Frankenstein. It was a five-star book for me. The book just seems really good. It's about four sisters or three sisters. I'm having a hard time remembering. But somebody dies, one of the sisters dies. Maybe it's five sisters and then one dies and it's them kind of reconnecting through the grief of their sister. And to me this sounds super interesting as I have uh, three siblings, two sisters. This just like, I'm like, I feel like this is gonna hit me in the older sister like gut. So really definitely want to read this high priority on my TBR. I guess all of these are high priority so I probably shouldn't say that for all of them. But anyway, that's the only book I didn't physically grab. All the rest I pulled out, so let's get into it. I'm gonna go. So the second book on my TBR is actually a trilogy, and that is the Breathless Trilogy by Maya Banks. I feel like these books are gonna go by really fast, which is why I wanna put them on my TBR. I've heard that this is similar to Fifty Shades of Grey, which is why I wanna read it, <laughs> honestly. I think that's why I ended up buying it. I ended up really liking Fifty Shades of Grey. I love the movies, they're like honestly a comfort movie. Don't ask me why. Um, but yeah, heard this is good, so wanna read this. I think it follows three brothers, Ash, Jace, and Gabe. They're three of the wealthiest, powerful men in the country. They're accustomed, they're accustomed to getting everything they want, um, anything at all. For Ash, it's women who changes everything he's ever known about dominance and desire. Okay, this is actually the third book, I'm pretty sure. I don't know why I read the third one. Okay, this one's about Jace, and then this one must be about Gabe. Okay, so each book is about a different brother? No, they're not brothers, they're just wealthy men. Anyway, I don't know, sounds intriguing to me, so... That's the next one on our little TBR. Then I have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This has been on my TBR for so long. I tried to grab books that have been on my TBR for the longest. So a lot of these books are probably random and you're like, this was popular a really long time ago. And I'm like, I know. Um, anyway, this is called The Midnight Library. I think it won several awards, but it is about a woman named Nora Seed who has a life full of misery and regret. Um, and she finds herself in the Midnight Library where she can kind of try out different lives. And the before times run out, she must, must answer the ultimate question, what is the best way to live? I, I don't know. I'm pretty excited to read this. I've heard that it's beautiful writing. I do think it's one of those books that make you think. And I think that'll be helpful because I have a lot of mix of like nonfiction, poetry, and then romance. And then I want to get into like more literary fiction stuff. And so I think this will be really cool and I hope it lives up to the hype. We have The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. I actually have three of her books on my TBR, but I wanted to pick this one because it is a TV show. And I feel like that probably talks about the success of the book itself. Um, I don't know if it has like a sequel to it. So if it does, I'll probably add that on my TBR, um, depending if I like it or not. Um, but this, the back says it's Nantucket wedding season, also known as summer. The sight of a bride racing down Main Street is as common as the sun setting at Madiket Beach. 
The Otis Winberry wedding promises to be an event to remember. The groom's wealthy parents have spared no expense to host a lavish ceremony at their oceanfront estate. But it's going to be memorable for all the wrong reasons after tragedy strikes. The maid of honor is discovered dead in Nantucket Harbor just hours be before the ceremony, and everyone in the wedding party is suddenly a suspect. As Chief, Chief of Police Ed Kavanaugh interviews the bride, the groom, the groom's family, mystery novelist mother, and even a member of his own family, he discovers that every wedding is a minefield and no couple is perfect. So, interesting. And it looks like it features characters from her other novels, which is pretty cool. But I honestly had no idea that this was a mystery, so I'm pretty intrigued for it. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure this is the one that is either a movie or TV show, and now I'm like, I hope this is good because I want to watch it if it is. Okay, this is another book that got popular a long time ago. Oh my gosh, this is the author of Euphoria? Is that like the Euphoria Euphoria? I'm confused. Anyway, this is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. Honestly, I have no idea what this is about. I, I think I saw on a TikTok that was like four thought daughters and I bought it. Like why? Um, anyway, it says blindsided by her mother's sudden death and wrecked by a recent love affair, 31 year old Casey Peabody has arrived in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the summer of 1997 without a plan beyond a determination to live a creative life. Written with King's trademark humor, heart, and intelligence, this is a transfixed scene novel that explores artistic passion ambition and the terrifying and exhilarating leap between the end of one phase of life and the beginning of another. So it's an unforgettable portrait of an artist as a young woman, which that's funny because James Joyce has a book called The Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. So this is like a twist on that, I guess, which is pretty interesting. I'll be intrigued to see what this is. I, it seems like it's kind of like a coming of age novel um, and I'm sure it'll be good. Maybe it'll be good as a young woman I don't know. I'm just saying things. Okay, this is definitely going to be a good one, and that is Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. I love Sylvia Plath's poetry, and so when I ended up picking this up one time, I was like, I absolutely have to read this. I've heard so many good things. I'm, it's technically a novel, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of inspired by her own life. The Bell Jar chronicles the crack up of Esther Greenwood. Greenwood Brilliant, beautiful, and enormously talented and successful, but slowly going under maybe for the last time. Plath masterfully draws the reader into Esther's breakdown with such intensity that Esther's insanity becomes completely real and even rational, as probable and accessible an experience as going to the movies. Um, so yeah, I'm just really excited about this. Sylvia Plath was known to have some like, of her own personal um, mental health struggles and I'm sure Esther is sort of a reflection of Plath herself so definitely excited to read this I think honestly like it'll be a heavy read but I think it'll go quick because I'm, I just am acquainted with Plath's writing and so so good we have a Frederick Bachman novel and this is called A Man Called Obey and I am also pretty sure this one is a movie and I really don't know what it's about other than that it's my friend Allison's favorite book and I have heard really good things. I've read, I think I've read two short stories by Frederick Bachman and I rated both of them five stars. They are so freaking good. And so I think it's time that we finally read a novel by him. Um, and so this is about a grumpy old man named Ove. And he um, becomes friends with an appearance of new neighbors who are a chatty young couple and their two daughters. Um, and I'm assuming it is just this old man like coming out of his shell and talking to these neighbors. I don't really know. I have no idea, but there is there is a cat on the bottom, which looks kind of fun. And I'm pretty sure Tom Hanks plays Obey. I could be I could be mixing it up, but I'm pretty sure that's the same one. And I'm like, if I read these, I get to watch the adaptations, which is really exciting. So if you guys have read this, please encourage me. I'm I'm not I don't need that much encouragement because I love his writing, so I think it'll be good. I have a play by Shakespeare, and that is Much Ado About Nothing. I actually saw this in person at Shakespeare's Globe in London, and it was so so good. Like the actual performance, I think it's the best performance I've ever seen live. Um, and either that or I did get to see. Uh, Romeo and Juliet with Tom Holland and I'm not sure which one is better. Honestly, I think I'd like much ado about nothing because it was so interactive. But I mean, this is super short. It's a play and I want to finish it just because I've seen it in person. 
and I want to say I have read it as well. We have Joan Didion's The Year of Magical Thinking. I got this recommendation from my friend Libby like two years ago. This has been on my TBR for so so long um, but I think it's about her husband getting diagnosed with cancer. I actually am not sure but I do know it's about her own life and her talking about like this year that transformed her life. Your magical thinking, obviously. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure it's beautiful. I don't think I've ever read anything by Joan Didion. And so I really am excited to read this. Um, it does say from one of America's iconic writers, a stunning book of electric honesty and passion. Didion explores an intensity of personal yet yet universal experience, a portrait of marriage and a life in good times and bad that will speak to anyone who has ever loved a husband or wife or child. So I'm really excited for this. I think it'll be good. Um, she's on, her family's on the back, I believe, and I'm excited. Switching it up, we're gonna talk about a thriller that I wanna read. This is Watching You by Lisa Jewell. This is my last Lisa Jewell book that I have on my physical TBR. I think I've read three or four books by her, so I just wanna give my last book a final read. Um, and yeah, I don't really, it's, Mel Melville Heights is one of the nicest neighborhoods in Bristol, Engl England. It's not usually the sort of place where people are murdered in their own kitchens, but it is the sort of place where everyone has a secret and prying eyes lurk be behind every curtain. So who has been murdered and who would have wanted one of their neighbors dead? Watching you will keep you guessing until the startling revelation on the very last page. I don't know, it sounds good. Her books always like give me the creeps in like a good way, like they're really well done. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this and it looks scary. So we're going back to like the classics memoir type things. I have a memoir by JC Duggard. This is called A Stolen Life. This is about a young girl who was abducted and in 1991 and for 18 years she was kept prisoner and then she was released and she took her name back and this is her retelling her story. I think I saw honestly like a TikTok about this woman and just like her resilience and her strength um, for taking back her life and I was like oh I want that book so much and then like a couple weeks later when I was at Good or Goodwill uh, a couple weeks later when I was at Goodwill it was there for a dollar and I was like okay that's a sign and it looks like it's in brand new condition and I was like I, I think that's a sign that I need to read this but that was like a year and a half ago and I still haven't read it so we're reading it this year. Another memoir type thing. This is actually a collection of essays and blog posts from a person I went to high school with. His name's Jojo. And he actually just recently got married. So congratulations, Jojo. I actually don't know if he's offering these for sale anymore, but if they if he is, I will let you guys know. But you guys should follow his blog. I'll link it down below. Uh, but it's called The Inevitable Queer, and like I said, it's just a collection of some of his blogs as well as some essays that he's written and hasn't published anywhere, and it's his experience with religion, coming out, high school, college, just basic life things, and um, it's really special that I have the opportunity to read this. I keep up with his blog, so I've read um, probably some of these but you know it's always good to refresh one's brain. I think this is like the only novel length classic I put on my 2025 TBR. It's gonna be really weird 2025 is gonna be the first year where I'm not in college like having to read books like this so I only put one as like a slow motivational thing and that is Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. My friends Ashley and Major both read this last year and or yeah they both read it last year and they both loved it and I really want to read it I've heard so many good things about it um it's about it's like the woman in the attic trope which I think is really interesting and I feel like that inspires a lot of other um novels that you read like in today's time so I definitely want to give this a read it is a it's like thick but I'm hoping it'll be good I think it's a bit of like a mystery romance type vibe so wish me luck sure those are all the classics and stuff so we're gonna get into our thrillers and like fantasy stuff um i have i tatuba black witch of salem um by marcy conde and this is about a woman um she's a west indian enslaved woman and she's accused of witchcraft and 
Um, she's forgotten in jail and it's kind of giving her own story. I don't know if this if this is based on a real person. I am unsure. Um, but I do think the plot sounds really cool and it is a pretty short book. I was supposed to read it for class this year and I didn't. I missed that class period and I didn't end up reading it. So not great, but that gives me motivation to actually finish it in 2025 and also it's short. 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. Again, I was picking the books that have been on my TBR the longest. This has been on my TBR since July 2021. Guys, that's crazy. This is a thriller set during COVID time about a couple, one of them dies and it's unraveling that mystery. So I don't really know, but we are gonna finish it so I can just not think about it ever again. This is another one that's probably been on my TBR since 2021 and that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I did try to start reading this a little bit ago and then I soft DNF'd it. So we're gonna read this. It's about a book club that reads about vampires and they start accusing or this new guy comes into town and they assume he's a vampire and so it's them like solving this case or something like that. I have actually a full series. Actually, I don't know how many books are in the full series, but it's a Persephone and Hades retelling by Scarlet St. Clair. The first book is A Touch of Darkness. I'll just show that. I have the first three books. I want to read at least the first three um, or at least dive into the series. If possible, I'd love to finish the completed series. That way, again, it's one of those things where I'm like, it's not taunting me on my bookshelf. But that is another one with this series and go into our last like fantasy set and I am going to talk about Nightbane and Skyshade by Alex Astor. I'm honestly probably going to have to reread Lightlark since the last time I read that was or the first and last time I read that was in 2022 when it first came out and I feel like to read these I probably need to like get a refresh but I'm pretty sure in Lightlark. I even have the page inserts of all six characters, which is really, really cool. I'll have to show this um, whenever I get that first book again. It's at my, uh, it's at my parents' house. But yeah, these books are really cool and I definitely want to read them this year. I think this is my last series on my 2025 TBR and that is the Magnolia Park series. I actually have read all three of the first books, but and I got like honestly 60% of the way through the fourth book, but I think I need to just give this series another try and read all of them like back to back to back and so on. And also I'm hoping that the sixth book will come out this year. Honestly, I know a lot of people don't want this series to end, but I hope it does end at the sixth book. That way it's like three Magnolia, three Daisy. Maybe she's already planning on that. I, I don't keep up with Jessa Hastings. But I do want to give this another read. The books are so gorgeous. I wish I had the indie covers, but these are still like really, really cool. So anyway, that's also on my TBR. It's like I've been talking forever. We only have a few more books left and these are all like general fiction or romance. Um, and this is another book of the month book. It's called A Little Hope. I'm pretty sure this is literary, literary fiction, but this has been on my TBR for three years, November, 2021. So we need to read it. It's just about this like neighborhood, I think, and they're dealing with loss of love, uh, career, illness, betrayal, and it's them just coming together and creating a community. And I think that honestly sounds really, really sweet. And it's honestly not that big, so I bet it would be a really feel good book. So you definitely wanna give this a read. This is another book that has a TV show and that is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus really want to read this i was able to actually meet her and she was so so kind she signed the book for me and this is also a show even though i'm gonna say it bonnie says she didn't really like the show so that's all i'm gonna say but i am still probably gonna read it after i read this book or I'm, i am still probably gonna watch it after i read this book but this is about a woman who um I'm sure she's kind of like a feminist gal and she's really good at science and a, she's a single mother um and she's on this cooking show, um, but it's just like, I don't know, she's, she challenges the status quo, and I feel like this is a really important book for women, at least from the discourse that I've seen about it. Um, but yeah, definitely want to give this a read this year. We have four more books. We'll start with this one. This is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think this has been out for like two years or something like that. This is about Carrie Soto, who is back. 
she's coming out of retirement from tennis and I love tennis so I definitely want to give this a read I do remember like reading a chapter and then not <laughs> again um but it seemed pretty good from this part of her like interconnected series that she has going on with what was it Daisy Jones and the Six uh Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo Malibu Malibu Rising and then this book I think that's the, like little interconnected series um but I definitely want to read this I've heard pretty good things about it I heard that it's not like her best book but I I love I love her writing so I definitely want to read it the book I got this summer and that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies and I do believe there's a second book out and I'd probably just add that onto my TBR whenever I finish this but I actually got it when I was in Paris which is just so cool um, I got it at Shakespeare and Company so it has the little stamp on it and I it's just like one of those things where I'm like oh my gosh I will cherish this forever um, but yeah, I definitely want to read the second one. I have no idea what it's about. Um, it's obviously some sort of fantasy thing, but the cover is gorgeous, so really excited to read that. I have The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This is part of a interconnected series with The Cheat Sheet. I own that book, so I ended up purchasing it just because I wanted the complete series. But this is a second chance romance about uh, Nora McKenzie and a NFL tight end Derek Pender um, and she was his ex or their exes from college and they broke up and I don't know why they end up getting together but oh it says the next morning they're married so I don't really I don't really know but it honestly sounds really fun and like kind of mind-numbing and I think Sarah Adams is a really fun author so I'll be reading this. And our last book I have here is One Day by David Nicholas. I watched this show because my friend Major was obsessed with this series. She watched the movie, she watched the show, she read the book. She has like three copies of it um, and I we went to Arthur's Seat like you know all of this stuff. I've heard so many good things. It is a normal people of sorts and I love that. So that is the last book on our 2025 TBR. A lot of books I want to read in 2025. These are like at most highest priority for this year. I'll probably read other books than just these, which is unfortunate, but my goal is to get at least these books done off of my physical TBR because this is like minus 40 books probably. Actually, let's cap really fast. It is actually minus 35 books if I'm also counting Nightlark, which isn't currently here. But 35 books is actually pretty good and I am hopeful that I can read all of that. Um, so send me, send me your best wishes so I can finish these. But yeah, thanks so much for following along. I can't believe we're over halfway done with book myths. It's, it's so crazy. Um, if there is like any recommendations you want for like the last couple of days, let me know. I do have things planned. But if you guys have a better su suggestion, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow in the next Bookmas vlog. Peace and love. Bye, guys.